Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. So there have been a couple of updates on the BB Nodes add-on and I thought it was time to show you what's been added. So for those of you who are not familiar with BB Nodes, I advise you to go check out the first video about the add-on and I'll leave the link for it in the description. But to put it in words, it's an add-on that when installed it gives you access to now more than 100 custom nodes that make working with geometry nodes in Blender match faster, easier and more fun. And for those of you who already got the add-on, just head to your products page and get it free of charge. The manual has also been updated and now it features this little icon right here that lets you know this is the new addition to the note set. Now let's talk about these new nodes. So here we have all the nodes and the ones in green are the ones that got an update of some kind and the ones that are red are simply new nodes. And um, I'm going to show you all of them real soon. These are the nodes we're going to talk about today and uh, these two green ones got a pretty big update so we're gonna cover them also and let's start right away with this bend node which is the old node that you access from this menu bb nodes and under modifiers bend and here it is so uh this is simple geometry and let's just plug in the bend node and as you can see this is what happens so what we got here is a gizmo you can turn it off or on. You can scale it a bit so you can see it better. And what this gizmo shows you, it shows you the plane of the reference. So this is like the plane where everything over this plane and it's uh, this upper part is shown with this like line over here. So this is where it's over and under doesn't have this line. And these two arrows show the direction of the bend. Everything over this plane will get bent and under it will not but still we have this checkbox bend both sides where it will bend both ways here you control the angle of the bend and these two vectors right here control the position so the center of the bend so you can move the center and you can see what happens in real time and you can change the direction of the plane so where the direction where the plane is facing so practically this vector right here you can change it so now it faces that direction over there let's just keep it at z and we got the sweep angle which is the angle that rotates this plane as you can see now it's bending like this Pretty simple. So now let's just try something. Angle of 180. We can bend both ways. We can maybe scale it on the Y some more. And then we can add another bend node. But first we need to remember to hide this gizmo of the first one and let's just change this axis of rotation of the bend like this and let's move a bit its center and this is what we've achieved let's just hide the gizmo also here and look what has been done we can maybe uncheck this and this is the result so as you can see, you can uh, achieve really interesting shapes with it. Anyway, it's your choice. Let's move on. So the next one we've got, the new one is the knife node. So here we have this simple sphere and the knife node is right here. So how does this knife node works? We have this like axis, which is this one here, and this is our knife and we, we can change its position so for example, I can move it out and, and I can change its rotation. And then I can project onto our sphere in the direction of this vector right here. And as you can see, the cut is being created. You can hide this plane and you can see the cut is right here. And not only that, you can, for example, 
uh, you can for example delete part of that geometry for example this is side one so not so not this side and this is what we get so as you can see or we can use the other part like this and not only that you also have you also have this interest intersection plane so it also keeps this one this is the plane that kind of intersect it's right here and you can merge the vertices so if you want these vertices to be merged or you can keep them separated like this and then you'll have two different mesh islands you can show uh, the knife plane i've already shown you this and you can do the custom knife object so if you check this then you need to plug in i have something here this is like this simple polyline here is our object and i can just plug it into here and show the knife plane and i can set the translation to zero and also the rotation to zero so that when i project my axis it will cut through our sphere and i can hide now the plane and as you can see we've created a perfect cut working fine also the intersection is also showing the way it should uh, you can obviously combine more cuts so like this and you can see that we created more than one cut okay let's move on the next one is the upright extruder and this one is also an old node but got an update so now you are able to extrude even the open profiles and not only just closed ones so for example uh, if i was to delete this edge as you can see the extrusion still works with an open profile let's move on the next one is pretty pretty simple it's the auto smooth so let's just turn off these this wireframe mode and you just plug it in here and as you can see these faces around are getting smooth and the ones on top and bottom are not and you can change the the, the degrees down here pretty simple next we've got the shear cube so here we have geometry and this is our shear and what does shear do this is what shear does it's the same thing as in edit mode uh, there is this shear tool and here we got it with the node and what's cool about it that uh, you have these two uh, axes that you can change and you can also change the position of the center of the shear so it practically works the same way as the shear tool in edit mode but here we also have the selection socket so we can plug in for example this selection that it only shears the vertices on the x positive you can imagine that you can do a lot of things with this let's move on next we got the curve extender so here is a simple curve and we can reverse it we can extend the start of the curve by this distance as well as the end of the curve by this distance it takes practically the tangent at the end point and then it prolongs it by adding just one curve point so no matter how many curve points are here he's just going to add another one in the direction of the tangent of the end or respectively of the start let's move on next we got bridge so bridge uh, 
works just like uh, bridge and loop tools. So we have two geometries. Here I have one geometry and this is the other one that I brought in with this object info node and then I just plug in these two geometries into geometry one and geometry two and the result is bridge. This is what bridge looks like. You can twist it and you can use the nearest this one is very useful when we don't have uh, geometries with the same number of vertices. You can reverse it if for some reason they are oriented in a different way. This would prob probably happen if you got like, uh, I don't know, these were like scaled like this and then reverse would do a better job. And, and of course, uh, if you have like uh, less vertices on one side then of course nearest will still work its magic now let's move on and this one is pretty pretty interesting this is uv mapping so uv mapping node so for example here we have geometry that's like cylinder and we would want to set a material on it that has a texture and i have like a tech test checkers material which has a texture and if you just apply this material to the geometry a blender and geometry nodes uh, don't know how to place that texture on our faces of the object so we got here a uv mapping node just plug it in here and then here you need to type something uh, let's just type map and then go to the shadings workspace and under the materials node editor that same material you want to apply to you need to change the vector of the mapping of the texture so this is our texture so this is the mapping and now the mapping happens according to the uv but there is no uv set for this object but we can set an attribute that we called map so here we're going to type map and this attribute node and then we're going to connect uh, the vector socket to the vector socket and as you can see now something is happening uh, but it's all scrambled so let's go back to the geometry nodes editor and now we need to set the seams because what happens now is uh, since this socket is empty all edges are considered seams and you can see what this uv unwrap looks like if you check this show uv map and this is where it is so this is uh, our object unwrapped and all the faces are far apart from each other because we haven't chosen our seams yet you can change the position of this preview of the unwrap here so this is the position of it you can change it here and you can also scale its size the uv mapping itself doesn't change just, just a preview of it okay just a little like this and now we need to set the seams so how are we going to set the seams so first we need to uh, set this upper part as a seam and this lower part as a seam and that's pretty simple we just on the position of it and then everything over this line and everything under this line so we just use the not equal as the z position so z position here is one and here is minus one and we're just going to set it to not equal to zero with an epsilon so everything over 0 0.5 and everything under 0 0.5 will be selected so let's plug this in here and now what happens okay we got our first seams as you can see now these two got separated this one and this one and they are mapped correctly but all this thing in the middle is really messed up so how are we gonna how are we gonna select one of these edges and now uh, we're going to use another node. So this one is also an old node from the BB nodes add-on. It's called display attributes. And I'm going to plug it in here to see the indices. And now I see all the indices. And now I'm going to use another new node, which is called edge path selection. And what this node does, you set two index values and then it chooses the shortest path between two indices and it returns a selection 
of them. So here I've already chosen the index number six, index number 14, and you can we can find them somewhere here. Where are they? So 14 is here and this one six is down there. So this selection is gonna return all the indices, the shortest path from 14 to six. So these edges right here. And then we need to also keep in mind this selection up here. We use that with the Boolean node or so or this one or this one and then it seems like it's working fine let's just mute this we don't need it anymore and and now we see that our cylinder has been mapped correctly and it looks really nice so that's the uv mapping node let's move on this one is pretty simple this one is the reverse field so here we have we just plug in a field we're going to plug in an index and it returns a reverse of that field so integer like this let's just call it i don't know rev and now here we have this rev values that are reverse of the index values so zero one two three four, seven and zero is in the, the other direction pretty simple and the next one is another simple one it's quad so uh, this is a simple generator so we just plug it in here and it creates a quad you just set the points the four points of the quad you created a quad by defining the four points that create it nothing to it and you can switch the position of v2 and v3 if they're in the wrong order but this is not the case from this example okay let's move on just two more so the edge path nodes we have uh, two of them i already shown you the edge path selection but here we have the same thing but it creates it doesn't output a selection but it outputs a curve so now we have a bunch of vertices here on this grid and if you want to see the indices just plug in the display attribute and and then we we can choose a path or the two of them to connect and so i've already done this so i've chosen index number six and then index number 22 and it returned the shortest path between these two indices 22 and 6 it returns a curve between them the other edge path selection node is the one already shown you it's the one that returns a selection field so i just deleted the shortest path between 6 and 22 which was that one and that's what happened here and the last one that we're going to talk about today is this switches node. Uh, there are actually three of them. This is very, very simple. So we got a switch here from 1 to 20. And depending on this switch, it will return one of these 20 options. We got a vector type switch. We got a float type switch and the material type switch I'm going to show you. So this is our cube, which is going to set a material. Uh, from this node and if the switch is one then it would return a blue material if uh, the switch is two green and so on and so on as you can see and that's it for this video i've shown you all of these new nodes you can download this add-on from the link in the description thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next one bye bye